normal ultra kill. The only difference is that it's not played by a human. V1 is fully controlled by an AI that I made. In this video, I'll explain how it works, for example, how it interprets a screenshot and turns it into actions, then I'll explain how good or bad it is performance-wise, and finally, as it is fully open source, how you can run or improve it yourself. What I think is cool about it is that the game doesn't even know it's being controlled by the AI. For Ultra Kill, there's no difference between this and a normal human player, unlike what some other coders would have done. If you want to skip the technical part straight to the gameplay, click here on the YouTube timeline. Now let's get to work planning. I thought that we will first make an interface script, whose job will be to handle all the input from the game in the form of screenshots and output key presses back into Ultra Kill. Then a bunch of sensor scripts will sort of extract more usable information from the screenshots. For example, enemy positions or a depth map. Finally, let's write a script called main behavior. That takes in the more digested information from the sensor scripts and based on that tells the interface script what controls to send back into the game. Then repeat that in a loop. Let's first get that interface script out of the way before we can write any AI stuff. As I said, its job will be getting input in the form of screenshots and also sending back actions like walking, jumping, rotating, etc. Writing the screenshots part is easy enough, but the game controls aren't really. I won't go over all of the failed attempts, as doing that would equate to P-2 on the audience or attention graph, but at the end I found a library called VGamePad, which can somehow emulate an Xbox 360 controller. And luckily for us, Ultra Kill is fully compatible with controllers, so that's good. Even though Ultra Kill is not deterministic, and I've never done one, but if anyone wants to try making a task speedrun using the script on some no enemies category, that would be pretty cool. Alright, now that V1 has a Python API that can get images from the game, and send inputs back, all that is left is to make an algorithm to turn those images into the correct inputs. That's a pretty daunting task on its own, so let's break it down into those sensor scripts I was talking about. Their job will be to process the screenshots into more usable info, such as enemy positions on the screen, a depth map, and whatever else. Having a sensor for finding enemies in an image sounds pretty helpful, so let's do the targeting sensor first. Luckily, object detection, as it is called, is already a pretty developed field in computer vision. For Ultra Kill, we need some neural network that is both light enough to run on my heavily abused GPU multiple times a second, but at the same time be at least somewhat reliable and not make too many mistakes. One net that fits those requirements is YOLO V5M. It's sort of an industry standard and is probably responsible for most of those videos of cars and trucks being outlined. It works by taking in an image and for each object that it found it returns the X and Y coordinates of the center, the predicted height and width, along with the type of the object. This whole package is called a bounding box, and each object in the image gets its own one. Of course, the stock weights and passes of YOLO V5M won't work on detecting ultra kill enemies, they were made to detect common real life objects. So we'll have to fine tune it. I could just record hours of gameplay footage, and then send it to some agent's sweatshop for labeling. But unfortunately, due to the recent uptick in child labor prices, this option is way out of my budget. Instead, we can do the following. First, record a bunch of background screenshots without enemies in them. Then, sort of scan each enemy that we want to detect from all angles, so we're left with a bunch of images like these. And finally, 
using a haste to throw together algorithm, pump out like 12,000 images with those backgrounds and enemies combined, while simultaneously generating the appropriate bounding boxes for each enemy put on screen. After a few failed abortion training attempts, I got one that performed fine. As you can see there are still some imperfections, but in general it will work for our purpose. Here I made a little demo to rotate towards the enemy closest to the center of the screen, every time the network returns a result. We can't rely purely on the positions of enemies for making decisions such as how to walk to avoid walls. Usually robots and other AIs that need to navigate spaces use a variety of distance sensors to gauge how far away obstacles are. Let's take inspiration from that. As V1 does not have a built-in sonar system, we still have to rely purely on the screenshots to estimate distances. Fortunately for us again, it's not the first time that this task needed solving. Depth estimation neural networks, as they are called, are already a thing. Give it an image, and for each pixel it will return how far away it thinks it is. The brighter the pixel, the closer it was estimated to be. I found one that works well for Ultra Kill without any further fine tuning required. It's called Midas DPT Large. It's not ideal because of its weight, as I can only run either the object detection network or the depth network once at a time on the GPU to get any reasonable reaction times. To actually avoid walls, we can check if the left and right sides of the image have an average brightness above a certain threshold, in which case there's probably a wall there. Using this right wall left wall detection, I made a Roomba inspired exploration algorithm. Basically, if there's a wall on the left, rotate and walk right, and do the opposite for a right wall. Those are all of the sensors that I wrote for now. Of course, if you have more ideas for sensor scripts, comment them below. And if you really want to, you can close the git repo and actually implement them. Alright, now that we got all of this helpful information about the game, we can actually write the main behavior of our AI. After some testing, I found that the best, at least for this case, structure for this script was to have three modes. The first one is combat mode, the second is quick scan, and the third one is maze navigation. Let's do the combat one first. This mode will activate immediately when the target sensor detects even one enemy in the image. We can keep the aiming system from the demo before, since it worked well enough. Let's also make V1 shotgun swap, as it is pretty easy to put into code and also has a solid damage output. This is already working fine, but if V1 just stands there in the same place, it'll be killed pretty quickly. So using the targeting sensor again, we will check how much area the enemy we are looking at takes up, if it's too small, walk forward, if it's too big, walk backwards. That should hopefully make it so we always keep a safe distance from targets. One more small issue. Currently, there is no defense against red orbs. So let's make V1 just constantly zigzag right and left to hopefully dodge those. Now, the combat mode is already pretty decent, at least compared to a random number generator. Another issue that I noticed is that if an enemy gets behind V1's field of view, currently V1 will just stand there and do nothing. So the quick scan mode is for refinding those cases. For that, we can just zigzag the camera up and down and rotate in the last known direction of the enemy. Even though it's pretty simple, now it's pretty hard to trick it into losing sight of an enemy. Of course, at some point we want to view one to come out of quick scanning mode, if no enemies were found. Because they might be so terrified that they're hiding behind corners which we can't see. So after 8 seconds of the quick scanning mode, we enter maze navigation mode. 
Here also no need to think too hard, we can just reuse the algorithm from before with some minor improvements. Finally, after adding some finishing touches, like if the enemy is really really small, whiplash, and if it's really really big, then dash backwards. And that's everything I did for now. By the way, all of the ADHD TikTok zero attention span viewers who skipped the explanation from the beginning join us back in about 3 seconds. So one last recap. First, the interface script takes a screenshot. Then, the two sensor scripts that we made use that screenshot to better understand the situation by outlining all the enemies in the image and making a depth map. That even more digested information is then taken by the main behavior script that decides what actions to send back into the interface script, which in turn will apply those back into UltraKill. And that continues in the loop. Finally, we can take it for a spin. First, if we just plop it into the cyber grind on wave 1, it will get on its own to around wave 5, depending on how lucky it is. Even though a few times I had to save it from falling off the ring. In the campaign, it can go through pretty much all combat arenas in Prelude and some in Limbo. The issue is that get from one arena to the next is really hard for it. And any vertical environments that also require jumping are pretty much impossible. I should also note here that even after trying to optimize this, I couldn't get it to have a good enough reaction time. So to solve this, I put the game and all of the timings in the code to have speed, and sped up the footage by 150%. That's equivalent to my PC somehow running this twice as fast. However, if you put Funk in the background and increase the editor's food rations, it looks almost good at the game. are that it's just not using enough firepower, or any coin tech. Adding more complex combos will definitely improve it. Also, it really doesn't like dead bodies. I remember that turning off gore also removed the ragdolls, but for some reason in newer versions of Ultra Kill, I haven't found a way to remove them. Of course, a navigation system that relies purely on a depth map isn't good enough. So if anybody has ideas for improving it, you're welcome to comment them below. And that concludes this video. If you want to improve it, just make a pull request and I'll merge your branch. If you're making big structure changes, it's better to notify others, so resolving all of that will be less of a hell. Thank you for watching, all of the relevant links will be in the description.